Mm. It's already done now. You might as well sit down. Yeah, you missed it. Sabbath peace. Sabbath peace. It's another opportunity for what's the Sabbath, y'all? I think today, uh, Feast of Weeks. What's the Sabbath? What's the week? Feast of Weeks was last week. That was last week, huh? I, I should know. Uh, it's uh, you fired. What's the Sabbath? No, I forgot. We sit here and we say Sabbath you're peace every day. 100% fired. But it's important for us to know what we're talking about. Yeah. I tell y'all what I tell you and your brother all the time about repeating stuff. That's right. Don't get to repeat nothing if you don't understand the meaning. Why? You might say something you didn't intend to say. Just because you're trying to sound cool, just because you're trying to use a word that you heard somebody else use. When you hear a word, you hear something that you want to repeat. That's fine. It's fine. I want to repeat stuff. It's, that's learning, right? When you hear something, it's like, man, I want to say that too. I want to sound like that person. That's learning. That's how our brains work. That's good. But you need to understand what you're saying. Right? Just knowing a word, that's smart. Right? But it's not good enough to be smart. You have to have an understanding. You have to get an understanding. You can't do nothing with smarts. Smarts is just remembering you pass a test when you got smarts. All right? But when it comes to actually living in the real world, you have to have wisdom and an understanding. That's how you can use information for your benefit and for the benefit of the people around you, right? So when we talk about Sabbath, what is Sabbath? Can't none of y'all tell me what Sabbath is? There we go. So the Sabbath is the seventh day of a, a seven day week. It's the end of a week, right? So us as Hebrews, our ancestors, right? Had a calendar, a different, you know, or what we would call a calendar today, right? And at the end of our, our seven days, it would be the Sabbath. That Sabbath, the, the, um, the sixth day of the week, would end on what we would consider Friday night. So that's why we have Bible study on Friday night, because the sixth day of the week would end at the evening of the sixth day, which would be the, the evening of Friday for us, right? So then we celebrate the Sabbath from the evening to the morning which means Saturday would be the Sabbath, right? So that's, 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 that's what we look at. Saturday is the Sabbath. The daytime of Saturday is the Sabbath. That's the Sabbath day. So what we say is Sabbath peace when we start because we're having a Sabbath study because it's the beginning of the seventh day of the week. Does that make sense? All right, Sabbath peace. Sabbath peace. It's another opportunity for us to come together and hear and learn of the word of truth as given to us by the most high God. All honor goes to the father through the son whose name is Yahushua. In him lies the only hope for salvation. We know that it is obtained by grace through faith, not of works, lest anyone should boast. And given freely as a gift to all who obey him. We understand that if you do not obey him, it is made manifest or made made obvious that you do not believe. In this state, you should expect no good thing from the Most High. However, anything that you do get, whether it be a gift of tongues, a gift of prophecy, or any supernatural experience that you may have, it can and it will be used against you in the day of judgment. With that said, peace to the saints that are in the room, to the saints that couldn't make it, the saints watching in on the camera, but no peace to the wicked, the only thing we say to them is repent that they might live. All right. Since you remember to open and tell me what happened last week. Mom's a darn word. Eh? Who remember what happened last week? No, you got to pay attention. Remember we be reading the Bible. I need you to pay attention. All right, so what king was we talking about? We got the kings up there. At least what king? You know what I'm saying? Who can help us out on, online? We'll let usually I don't like the folks online helping y'all out, but let's see who can help us out online. What king, what king was we dealing with last week? At least give me that. Yeah. Nobody? Okay. Can't even give us the king? You wanna read along? Boy, we ain't talked about Solomon so long. What king? 
What happened? What is this? Who lived? Who died? Oh. Was you here last week? Who lived? Who died? Not that one. Mel, you wasn't here last week? Like that. You sure? You with the crayons at? Under the crayons. That was a hard you on your own there. Okay, let me see. But ask your Uncle T fell. <sighs> okay, what happened? Ahab was the king in Israel. Jehoshaphat is the king in Judah. All right, y'all remember when uh when Jehoshaphat, you know what I'm saying, went up to the king of Israel, Ahab. They cut a deal. You know what I'm saying? Ahab, we read about Ahab, you know what I'm saying, kind of getting killed. We revisited a couple weeks ago, then we came back. Ahab ended up being killed. All right, then Jehoshaphat went on, and he, you know what I'm saying, the Most High God told him, he was like, man, you you being a friend to an enemy of God. So the Most High God told him, man, I got, it's some wrath that I got on you. But he said, you know what? I do acknowledge the good things that you've done. That's why it's important, it's important for us to do things that we're supposed to do. Right. A lot of people get it in their mind. It's like, oh, when 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 Phil preach what he preaching about, he trying to tell you that you got to be perfect because I, tell, I teach that you everybody got to turn away from all sin. Not just some sin, not just the sin that people that make you feel bad about. No, any sin that's documented from our Messiah or his apostles, we have to turn from, period. Right. We got a list of them. It's not hard. It's not a, it's not a whole bunch of stuff. It ain't what people they people try to make you think everything you do is a sin. You could be sinning on an accident. All that stuff is a lie. There's specific sins. And that's what we got to turn away from. Right. So people will try to present that as, oh, he trying to tell people to be perfect. That's not true. Right. It's great if we it's, it's possible to be perfect. It is possible to be perfect. The books say it. So I believe it's possible. Right. But that's not what I'm telling people as a as a requirement. All I'm saying is turn away from sin, right? If we like fill our lives with with good works, with works that's according to the book, right? Helping people out, being generous to people, looking out for people, obeying God's word, honoring God, putting him first. You know what I'm saying? Cleaning up our language, speaking things that, that are true and speaking things that are uh, beneficial, that build people up. And I ain't talking about no positive affirmations. You know what? You're going to be great. <laughs> I ain't talking about that. That's the deep people that make you feel. That's, that's a lie. You're, that's lying to people. Your butt going, ain't going to be great. Well, I'm going to sit here and tell you you're going to be great. Right? I don't tell y'all. Y'all don't. If you don't know me, you're going to get to know me. I will never sit in your face and tell you something just to make you feel good. Right? If I'm telling you something that makes you feel good, it's because I believe it and because it's the truth, in my mind at least. Sometimes I'd be wrong. I told some people that they great and been wrong about it. That's different. <laughs> I wasn't trying to make them feel good. I just really thought they were great. They but just made a darn mess afterwards. Sometimes you got to be careful what you tell people, right? But it's important that you, you know what I'm saying, you, you do good stuff, right? You do stuff that you're supposed to do. And it's nothing better than sacrificing yourself, right? It's nothing better. It hurts. It feels bad. You know what I'm saying? But that's, that's what it's called. You're know, sacrificing yourself. You know what I'm saying? Sometimes you got some we we get it in our mind that we gotta win. All right. We be getting in our mind that we just gotta win. You know what I'm saying? We gotta come out on top of we gotta win. And sometimes you don't understand that sometimes taking the what y'all call it, the L, all right? Taking the L, you know what I'm saying? Sometimes that's is that's what puts you on top. In the long run, that's what puts you gotta give it. You have to you have to give people to win because they be thinking everybody heard of like turn the other cheek. Anybody ever y'all heard of that that concept? Turn the other cheek. Basically, it's Yahushua. So Yahushua, when he was talking, he gave a uh, wasn't really a parable. Well, yeah, it wasn't really a parable. It was instruction. But he he was saying, if somebody were to slap you, what you should do is you should give them the other cheek to slap. So in other words, there's somebody to walk up and they mad at you and they slap you. He's saying instead of reacting, right? Instead of saying, "What homie? What you doing? You know what I'm Put your hands behind, knock you out, right? That's the natural thing for a lot of us to do with some people. Naturally, some people want to fight back. Naturally, some people go on, want to get somebody to come get them help. Some people want to call the police, right? Some people want to, you know, there's different ways that people will handle that type of situation. What Yahushua is saying is, nah, give them the other cheek to slap. 
right? Okay, that was one, then give them the other one, right? Now, we look at that, and we look at that like, oh, that's crazy. I ain't gonna let nobody take advantage of me, because at that point, you're taking, you're, you're, lo you're giving yourself up to lose. Like, I know I can whoop you. I know I can knock you out, but I'm gonna give you my other cheek instead, right? Sometimes we see that as a loss. We see that as, as I'm gonna look like a coward. I'm gonna look like I'm scary, right? I'm going to look like I'm not cool. And that type of stuff becomes difficult. Right. But you have to get that stuff out of your mind that you have to win and you have to look like you, 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 you on top of the situation. And instead, give yourself room to be lifted up by the most high God. Because otherwise, if you, your butt always trying to come out on top, you always trying to look like the winner, you're going to lose. You're going to spend a lot of your life being embarrassed. Right. Or dealing with stuff that, you got to lie and, 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 and make everybody else around you believe that you're on top. But there's always going to be people that you just feel vulnerable to because they know the truth about you. Now you got to be scared. You know what I'm saying? Scared of everything. Scared of stuff. You living the rest of your life trying to keep up with a lie. Stuff, man, I'm telling you, it's a lot of people living that. It's a lot of people living that. And that stuff, when you get older and you're trying to unravel all these lies, you're trying to get through it. You talking to somebody trying to do it, you going to therapists and going to all these different places trying to get it done. Man, I'm telling you, you don't need that stuff when you honest with yourself. All right. You honest with yourself. You stay in tune with yourself. You honest about your feelings called emotional intelligence. You, you know what I'm saying? That's what the, these corporate people call it. You know what I'm saying? But you stay in tune with what you got going on. You don't need all that stuff. You know what I'm saying? A lot of stuff you just don't need. A lot of reason people need therapy because we didn't lie to ourselves for so long. You ever heard of somebody suppression, they su suppressing a traumatic experience? You ever heard of it? It's like, it's like, you know what I'm saying? It was so scary or so bad. You forgot it happened. You don't even remember it happened because you don't want to think about it. You just want to ignore it. That's lying to yourself, right? It's something that we do to protect ourselves. Ain't nobody necessarily wrong for it because it's something that we do when we don't know how to protect ourselves. So that's what the therapists try to do. The therapists try to make you relive it and then teach you, a, a good therapist should try to teach you ways to deal with that 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 feeling or that thought or the traumatic experience that it brings up but we don't need it we don't necessarily need a therapist for that right if we stay honest with ourselves from the beginning and we just face it and we go through what we got we, what we got to go through you know what i'm saying we'll be all right you know what i'm saying and part of that is being able to live with the most high god and accept losses you got to accept the losses because when you lose for the sake of the most high god in the end you win and sometimes the end is closer than what you think. Right? The end be closer than what you think. A lot of people look at, you know what I'm saying? A lot of people look at, you know what I'm saying? A lot of stuff that my wife done done. You know what I'm saying? Like her friends look at her and they look at her and just like, oh, well, you have such a perfect life and you have all this stuff. And it's like, yeah, but they don't know the losses that she took. They just don't know because it don't matter. Once, you, once the most I got puts you on top in front of people, it don't matter what happened before. Don't nobody know me about how I used to live. People look at me and like, oh, you're a nerd. You're a Bible man. You're a preacher. All this stuff. They don't know. They don't know nothing about all this stuff I used to do. That stuff don't matter. Don't nobody even remember it. It's people I look, it's people I did the stuff with that don't remember it. Cause it don't matter no more. Right? Friends called my friends who I was out there with. They we doing the same stuff, foul stuff. They look at me and be like, nah, that's preacher man. Right? Don't laugh at that. That ain't funny. Say something else. <laughs> <laughs> no, but you know what I'm saying? That's, that, that's how it goes. So a lot of times the L's and the losses and the, and the sacrifices that we make early on, that's what's going to build us up for the future. And it's tough when you're young to think that far ahead. It's really hard. It's really hard. But I kid you not, that's what's going to separate the winners from the losers. That's what's going to separate the 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 16 year old now the 15 14 13 year old now that grows up and becomes the successful 35 year old with a happy peaceful life or the person that's chasing something that never feels fulfilled i ain't gonna say i ain't gonna say that that the people that that don't sacrifice now won't have a, a an appearance of success because some people are striking rich some people will get a good job and get lucky some people all that but your mind is not gonna be right you gonna have a little bit of money, 
and you always think about killing yourself or you're going to have you a little bit of money and you always think about being lonely or not finding the right person for your life and all these different things going crazy on the inside or even worse, you ain't going to have nothing. You're going to be struggling. You're going to be in and out of prison. You know what I'm saying? You're going to be sitting here going, you know what I'm saying? Just trying to figure out what's the next step for you to do living in complete chaos. It's avoidable. I want y'all to know that this stuff is avoidable. But it comes with understanding what's in front of you now and understanding the right decisions to make and taking the loss. It's going to feel like you lose it. But in the end, most high God going to put you somewhere and ain't nobody going to remember none of this foolishness y'all worried about now. It's all going to be forgotten. It ain't even going to make sense no more. Just stick it out. All right. So because uh, Jehoshaphat had a, a life of Good behavior, great behavior, always put on for the most high God, tore down the things that, that the kings before him, because he became a king and he tried to straighten stuff up. He was like, man, y'all ain't serving the most high God. Tear down these altars. These altars don't represent God. Tear them down. They, they represent some other God. We don't want that mess. You know what? Oh, y'all don't know about God. Let me assign three people to go out through all my land and teach y'all about God. These are things that he put in place to try to help the nation. Most high God see that. Well, how you think most high God feel? Like, yeah, that's my man. That's my man. I mess with him. So even when he messed up and he became a friend to the king of Israel, Ahab, and Ahab didn't mess with God at all, but that was still his friend, right? He became a friend with him. That wasn't a problem. But the man went out to a place where the most high God told him, you know what I'm saying? Like, it ain't going to work out for Ahab, right? So Jehoshaphat was like, well, I'm going to still go with him. He went with him and God didn't like that. So God said, there's going to be wrath on you. Right. But even with that wrath, I see the good things that you did. So that's mercy. Right. When we serve the most high God, we keep his commandments. The most high God has mercy on us. And that's all we can ask for. We know stuff is going to happen. We know we didn't mess up. We know that we sinned in our past. We know all this stuff and we gonna have to pay for every bit of it. The only thing you could ask for is mercy. And the way that you get mercy is you keep the commandments. Period. Period. That makes sense. All right. Let's see what we can pick up then. Let's go to um, what we leave off last week. Uh, Second Chronicles 20. All right. Let's go to First Chronicles. Uh, I mean, Second Chronicles. Uh, we left off on 20. Yeah, we're on chapter 20. We on chapter 20? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Then let's go to Second Chronicles 20 then. Second Chronicles chapter 20, verse 1. We'll take your book and go follow along, okay? Okay. Actually, give me First Kings okay, me 22. See. Give me 1 Kings chapter 22, do verse 37. So when you say verse 37, you got to start at the number. 37, so right here. So the king died. So when I start reading, follow along, okay? What's going on, Sister Ruth? I call you Sister Ruth because that's your name. You know what I'm saying? If it ain't your real name and you don't appreciate being called Sister Rue, you just let me know. That's your name on the chat. So, you know what I'm saying? That's what I go with. Yeah, 1 Kings 22. Yeah, let's do 1 Kings chapter 22, verse uh, 37. Let's see what the book says. So the king died and was brought to Samaria. And they buried the king in Samaria. Mm -hmm. They're they talking about Ahab right now. So you remember Ahab? You remember Ahab? He was he was riding around trying to be uh what's the word? Incognito. Incognito. Inconspicuous. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah. Incognito. You know what I'm saying? He was trying to pretend like he wasn't the king. So he was riding around, kind of dressed like any old soldier. And then he had Jehoshaphat, his friend, who is the king, king of Judah. He had the southern king. He said, "Go ahead and dress up like a king. They gonna think I'm you." He trying to do a sneak attack, right? Jehoshaphat dressed up. They start getting at Jehoshaphat. They noticed Jehoshaphat wasn't him. They looking like, man, that ain't the one. So they left Jehoshaphat alone, right? And then some random guy just shoot, shot an arrow. Didn't even, wasn't even aiming for Ahab. Random guy shoot an arrow. It hit Ahab, boom, right in between the, the, the armor that he had. Hit him in the side. Books a blood gushing down. Let's see. And one washed the chariot in the pool of Samaria, and the dogs licked up his blood, and they washed his armor. 
according unto the word of the Lord which he spake. Now the rest of the acts of Ahab and all that he did, and the ivory house which he made, and all the cities that he built, are they not written in the book of the chronicles of the kings of Israel? Mm -hmm. So Ahab slept with his fathers, and Ahaziah his son reigned in his stead. And Jehoshaphat the son of Asa began to reign over Judah in the fourth year of Ahab king of Israel. So Jehoshaphat the son of Asa began to reign, right? So we already kind of learned a little bit about Jehoshaphat. So um, let's, let's kind of keep going because Jehoshaphat is still alive. That's the end of the chapter there? No. Okay, let's keep going. Jehoshaphat was 35 years old when he began to reign. Mm -hmm. And he reigned 20 and 5 years in Jerusalem. Mm -hmm. And his mother's name was Azuba, the daughter of Shelah, mm -hmm. Shilhai. And he walked in all the ways of Asa, his father. He turned not aside from it, doing that which was right in the eyes of the Lord. Right? So this is why he got that mercy. Because he did that was, which was right in the eyes of Yahuwah. Right? Let's keep going. Nevertheless, the high places were not taken away. Mm -hmm. For the people offered and burnt incense yet in the high places. Mm -hmm. And Jehoshaphat made peace with the king of Israel. Mm -hmm. Now the rest of the acts of Jehoshaphat and his might that he showed and how he warred, are they not written in the book of the Chronicles of the Kings of Judah? Get up, boy. And the remnant of the Sodomites, which remained in the days of his father Asa, he took out of the land. Y'all know what Sodomites are? No, gay men, that's what we call them today, you know what I'm saying? That yeah, LGBT, all that stuff, you know what I'm saying? The gay ones, you know what I'm saying? The gay boys, the booty boys, you know what I'm saying? The sodomites, right? So them boys, you know what I'm saying? They're looking at it, it's looking like, okay, it's a remnant of sodomites. So you see that he didn't do everything he could, right? But he got it started. It's a lot. You got to imagine, like, people doing wild stuff, right? He come in, he like, okay, well, you know what I'm saying? Let me clean, let me... Let me pick up where my, my pops was, because his dad was trying to clean it up, too. So he just took it a little bit further than where his dad was. He was like, okay, well, you know what I'm saying? Let me clean some of this stuff up. You know what I'm saying? But it's letting you know, well, he didn't clean everything. They still had the high places, right? They would go take a hill. You know what I'm saying? Get your butt up. They had to go, they'd go take a hill. And then on the hill, they'd be like, you know what I'm saying? This place is close to the sky, so I'm going to worship, you know what I'm saying, whatever God they're trying to worship at that point. Get up, boy. All right? I'm going to worship whatever, whatever God I'm trying to worship at that point. So, you know what I'm saying? They go to the high places. God didn't like that. You know what I'm saying? He don't like people worshiping and sacrificing just anywhere. He got designated places. So he didn't take those down and, and he didn't, you know what I'm saying? He didn't get rid of the sodomites. Under our law, a sodomite got to die. It's death penalty right off the bat. These people wouldn't laugh. You know what I'm saying? Where we, where we from, these people wouldn't laugh. That's why they don't like us. You know, they, they wouldn't laugh. Right. So they were supposed to get the death penalty. He didn't necessarily do that, but he did start teaching people the law. You know what I'm saying? So the book is just trying to highlight like, oh, yeah, he did some good stuff. He didn't do everything. It wasn't like it was perfect under him, but he was trying is what the book was saying. Keep going. There was then no king in Edom. Uh -huh. A deputy was king. Mm -hmm. Jehoshaphat made ships of the Tarshish to go to Ophir. Ships of Tarshish, or oh, Tarshish, to go to Ophir for gold, but they went not, for the ships were broken at Ezion Geber. Then said Ahaziah, the son of Ahab, unto Jehoshaphat, Let my servants go with thy servants in the ships. But Jehoshaphat would not. And Jehoshaphat slept with his fathers, and was buried with his fathers in the city of David his father. And Jehoram, his son, reigned in his stead. All right, so notice how Ahaziah, who is the son of Ahab, Said to said to uh, Jehoshaphat, like, oh, I see the ships is all messed up. I tell you what, let my people go with your people and going up there. What Jehoshaphat say? He said, nah, okay. He said, no. Why you think he said no? Yeah, not this time, man. Last time I got in trouble for messing Look, up. Look, I got in trouble for being friends with y'all up there. Y'all crazy butts. I got in trouble, <laughs> right? But that's not the end of it. Right. Watch what happens. We well, we're going to keep reading this a little bit later. We'll try to get to it today. That's the end of the chapter. Mm -mm. No, let's keep going. Now. And Ahaziah, the son of Ahab, began to reign over Israel and Samaria the 17th year of Jehoshaphat, king of Judah, and reigned two years over Israel. Mm -hmm. And he did evil in the sight of the Lord and walked in the way of his father and in the way of his mother and in the way of Je Jeroboam, the son of Nebat, who made Israel to sin. For he served Baal and worshiped him and provoked the anger of the Lord God of Israel according unto all that his father had done. Right? So Baal is this other God. You know what I'm saying? We don't mess with Baal. 
But Ahaziah, the king of Israel, is our brother, right? Remember, we got two nations. Let me pull it up on the screen so y'all can see it. We got two nations. You know what I'm saying? But they all kind of like in one, right? So this is how I look. You got the northern kingdom here. That's the northern kingdom of Israel. That's where Ahab's kids are serving. Right now, the uh, son of Ahab, Ahaziah, has taken over here, right? Then you got down here, you got Jehoshaphat, right? Jehoshaphat trying to clean stuff up. Up here in Israel, they serve in whatever they want to serve, right? They serve the Most High God improperly, and then some people serve a totally other God called Baal, right? So they do kind of whatever they want to do up, up north. Down here, this is where the temple that the Most High God built, right? This is where this is. So all the sons of David kind of run this place. Joseph is trying to clean this up because, as you can imagine, since these places are so close together, when people are doing stuff they shouldn't do up here, it ends up coming down here, right? So let's keep going. Even though it's two nations, everybody's still related. Everybody related. It's like everybody cousins, yeah. right? It's just a big nation, just a huge family, right? But it's like everybody cousins. But everybody do stuff a little different, just like cousins. And you know what I'm saying? Sometimes your family fight. People don't get along. There's groups of people in the family and all that stuff. So that's kind of how ours are. We just got a whole bunch of tribes, but we all one big family. We all look the same. You know what I'm saying? Different little, just like this room, different complexion. You know what I'm saying? You got 100% real Hebrew here. And then, you know what I'm saying? You got y'all that, you know what I'm saying? Just at some point, you know what I'm saying? Just, you know, mix and change a little bit. But it's all right. Ain't nothing wrong with it. You know what I'm saying? As long as all y'all daddies is black. You know what I'm saying? Okay, good. Mel's all right. I got you. Don't worry about it. <laughs> you know right. still out on man. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. That's all right. You know what I'm saying. I got you. Don't even worry about it. You know what I'm saying. <laughs> um. So keep in mind, as we're reading, a lot, a lot of people go like, you know, like how God let black people go through this. If we supposed to be Hebrews, like why He put us in slavery, or why He just, why we always the bottom, why we always so. Honestly, all of these questions get answered as you're reading Kings. You can see. God's patience is wearing thin towards the end. So as we're reading the book of Kings and Chronicles and we've been through the book, that should answer your question thoroughly. Uh, he gave us about 400 plus years to get it right. And when we couldn't get it right, we still was getting it wrong. So um, as you're reading this, it, it gives you context of why, you know, we were punished the way we were. And it's way more than 400 years. Yeah. But yeah, this part, this part. Is about yeah, like the beginning was 400. And then after that, he kicked us out and brought us back. And then another 400. And then, yeah, but. Yeah, so. Yeah, so it's way more than that, yeah. Um, okay, so let's uh, let's uh, let's keep going. That's the end of the chapter there? Yeah. All right, go to, uh, let's, now let's go to 20. Second Chronicles chapter 20. This is Second Chronicles chapter 20, verse 1. We got to bounce around a little bit because, you know what I'm saying? We some of this stuff covers the kings, and I, I try to try to find the, the the best place to kind of read the most of it. Come here, Ezra. Were you reading on? Did you need help, or you knew it? Was it easy, or you was getting lost? So when uncle is talking, we're not reading. Only when I when I talk, my voice is when we're reading. You want to sit in that chair right here next to me? Get the chair. Did my baby sleep? This was gonna stop. Okay, ready? She sleep like that. That's she crazy. That. That's crazy. <laughs> And it came to pass after this also that the children of Moab and the children of Ammon and with them other beside the Ammonites came against Jehoshaphat to battle. Then there came some that told Jehoshaphat, saying, There cometh a great multitude against thee from the beyond and the sea on the side, on this side, Syria, and behold, they be in Hazazon Tamar, which is in Gedi. And Jehoshaphat feared and set himself to seek the Lord. Mm -hmm. And proclaimed a fast throughout all Judah. Mm -hmm. And Judah gathered themselves together to ask help of the Lord. Mm -hmm. Even out of all the cities of Judah, they came to seek the Lord. Mm -hmm. And Jehoshaphat stood in the congregation of Judah in Jerusalem, in the house of the Lord before the new court, and said, 
O Lord God of our fathers, art not thou God in heaven, and rulest not thou over all the kingdoms of the heathen? And in thine hand is there not power and might, so that none is able to withstand thee? Mm -hmm. Art not thou our God, who didst drive out the inhabitants of this land before thy people Israel, and gavest it to the seed of Abraham, thy friend, forever? You see how he using, you know what I'm saying? He using our history and the scripture against Yah. Not really against him, but you know what I'm saying, to, in favor of what he uh what he's about to ask for. He's literally telling him, he's like, Oh most high God, now we know who you are. Right? It's always the same format, right? You identify who you're speaking to, you give them praise, then you start using scriptures. Like, ain't you the one that uh, you know what I'm saying, drove out the nations that came here before us? Basically reminding God, like, we know you could do what I'm about to ask you for. You done done it before. Right? Watch this, keep going. Moreover, in Jerusalem, wait, my bad, nope, and they dwelt therein and have built thee a sanctuary therein for thy name's sake. Mm -hmm. If when evil cometh upon us as the sword, judgment, or pestilence, or famine, we stand before this house and in thy presence, for thy name is in this house. All right, who told him not? Solomon. All right, y'all remember when Solomon built the, te the temple? At the end, Solomon built the temple, he said a prayer. Y'all remember he said the prayer? Mm -hmm. Remember, he got on his knees and he held his, held his hands out straight like this. And he is saying a prayer. And he said in the prayer, if my people, you know what I'm saying, get under war and pestilence and they pray towards this temple that we just built. I'm asking you to hear the people. He asked God, just listen to the people. So now Jehoshaphat, him learning about the scripture, learning about our history. He's saying, listen, this time, you know what I'm saying? I know you can do it now. You know what I'm saying? I'm right here in front of the house. All the people, we in front of the house. We trying to figure this out. They out to get us. It's about to be war time. Can you help us out? You said, you told Solomon that you will listen to us. This is it. Right? Let's see what happened. For thy name in this house and cry unto thee in our affliction, then thou will hear and help. And now behold, the children of Ammon and Moab and Mount Seir, whom thou wouldest not let Israel invade when they came out of the land of Egypt, but they turned from them and destroyed them not. Mm -hmm. Behold, I say how they reward us to come to cast us out of thy possession, which thou hast given us to inherit. Mm -hmm. O our God, will thou not judge them? For we have no might against this great company that cometh against us, neither know we what to do. Mm -hmm. But our eyes are upon thee. <clears throat> And all Judah stood before the Lord with their little ones, their wives, and their children. Then upon Jehaziel, the son of Zechariah, the son of Benaiah, the son of Jael, the son of Madaniah, a Levite of the sons of Asaph, came the spirit of the Lord in the midst of the congregation. Mm -hmm. And he said, hearken ye all Judah and ye inhabitants of Jerusalem and thou King Jehoshaphat. All right. So the spirit hit this man. And then this, the, this man started to, he started to prophesy, right? So they praying to the most high God. They looking like, look, God, we don't know what to do with these people. We don't think we can whoop them out. And we don't really know too much about these folks either. So uh, we need some help. All of a sudden, the spirit come on this man. So in other words, he just starts speaking from the most high God. He said, hearken what? Hearken ye all Judah. In other words, pay attention all Judah. Right. All the people of the land. Pay attention. Watch this. And ye inhabitants of Jerusalem mm -hmm. and thou King Jehoshaphat. Uh huh. Thus says Yahuwah unto you. He said, thus says Yah unto you. Be not afraid nor dismayed by reason of this great multitude. He said, don't be scared of these boys. You know what I'm saying? Don't be scared. Don't be off put by these boys. Right. Not by reason of how many of them it is. A whole lot of them boys. But don't let that make you afraid. Watch this. For the battle is not yours, mm -hmm. but God's. Mm -hmm. Tomorrow, go ye down against them. Mm -hmm. Behold, they come up by the cliff of Ziz, mm -hmm. and ye shall find them at the end of the brook before the wilderness of Jeruel. Jeruel. Uh -huh. Ye shall not need to fight in this battle. Set yourselves, stand ye still, and see the salvation of the Lord with you, O Judah and Jerusalem. Mm -hmm. Fear not, nor be dismayed. Tomorrow, go out against them, for the Lord will be with you. And Je Jehoshaphat bowed his head with his face to the ground, and all Judah and the inhabitants of Jerusalem fell before the Lord, worshiping the Lord. And the Levites of the children of the Kohathites and of the children of the Korhites 
stood up to praise the Lord God of Israel with a loud voice on high. Mm -hmm. And they rose early in the morning and went forth into the wilderness of Tekoa. And as they went forth, Jehoshaphat stood and said, Hear me, O Judah, and ye inhabitants of Jerusalem. Believe in the Lord your God, so shall you be established. Believe his prophets, so shall you prosper. And when he had consulted with the people, he appointed singers unto the Lord, and that should praise the beauty of holiness as they went out before the army and to say, praise the Lord for his mercy endures forever. All right. So he set up singers. This wartime, he's setting up singers to be like, praise the Lord because his mercy endures forever. However they sing, who knows how they sing it? I like to believe they sing it a lot better than that. Right. But they, they go and they walk around and they singing this stuff. Right. Because what he's saying is, oh, the fight is not ours according to the most high God. So let me just praise him. Let me acknowledge his mercy. Right? Keep going. Watch this. And they rose early in the morning and went forth into the wilderness of... Oh, I'm sorry. Hold on. My bad. Nope. And when he had consulted with the people... Oh, nope. Not that one either. <laughs> and when they began to sing and praise, the Lord set ambushments against the children of Ammon, Moab, and Mount Seir, which were come against Judah, and they were smitten. Mm -hmm. For the children of Ammon and Moab stood up against the inhabitants of Mount Seir, utterly to slay and destroy them. And when they had made an end of the inhabitants of Seir, everyone helped to destroy another. Mm -hmm. And when Judah came toward the watchtower in the wilderness, they looked unto the multitude and behold, there were dead bodies falling to the earth and none escaped. Mm -hmm. And when Jehoshaphat and his people came to take away the spoil of them, they found among them in abundance, both riches with the dead bodies and precious jewels, which they stripped off themselves I appreciate more than they could carry away. And they were three days in gathering the spoil. It was so much. Mm -hmm. And on the fourth day, they assembled themselves in the valley of Berakah. Mm -hmm. For there they blessed the Lord. Therefore, the name of the, name of the same place was called the valley of Berakah unto this day. So they defeated them, boys. And then on top of that, they had so much spoil. When they say spoil, it's like, think of like, like money and jewelry and clothes and all the stuff that the other people just left around, they start taking all their stuff. Because once you win the war, now you own whatever you took over, right? The battle, at least you own whatever you took over. So they start taking the stuff. It took them three days to collect all the stuff. So now they got rich. You know what I'm saying? They got a lot, they got a lot more wealth just from winning this battle because it was so many people that we thought we is no way we can whoop these people out. But the Most High God fought the battle for us, right? Let's keep going. Then they returned, every man of Judah and Jerusalem and Jehoshaphat in the forefront of them, to go again to Jerusalem with joy, for the Lord had made them to rejoice over their enemies. Mm -hmm. And they came to Jerusalem with solitaries and harps and trumpets unto the house of the Lord. Mm -hmm. And the fear of God was on all the kingdom of those countries when they had heard that the Lord fought against the enemies of Israel. Right? So then once people heard... Like, oh, God did that? Then people start getting scared, right? People are a little bit afraid, like, uh, that might be dangerous. And the most high God a little dangerous, you know what I'm saying? Them people in Judah, you might want to leave them alone. Some weird stuff be happening, you try to fight them, right? So the people start fearing. Watch this. So the realm of Jehoshaphat was quiet, for his God gave him rest round about. Right? Why would it be quiet? Don't nobody want to fight Jehoshaphat no more. Somebody tried to fight him. Everybody heard that miraculously a bunch of people just start dropping dead. Right? After that, people like, mm, I don't want to fight Jehoshaphat. So everybody that was around Jehoshaphat, would just they just left him alone. Right? It gave him peace. Right? This one, this one had to happen because of the wrath that the Most High God put on him. But he still saved him from it. After that, you know what I'm saying? People kind of left him alone a little bit for a little while. Let's see. And Jehoshaphat reigned over Judah. He was 35 years old when he began to reign, and he reigned 25 years in Jerusalem. Mm -hmm. And his mother's name was Azubah, the daughter of Shilhai. Mm -hmm. And he walked in the way of Asa, his father, and departed not from doing it. Mm -hmm. from it from, oh, departed not from it, doing that which was right in the sight of the Lord. Mm -hmm. Howbeit the high places were not taken away, 
For as yet the people had not prepared their hearts into the, into the God of their fathers. Now the rest of the acts of Jehoshaphat, first and last, behold, they are written in the book of Jehu, the son of Hanani, who is mentioned in the book of the kings of Israel. And after this did Jehoshaphat, king of Judah, join himself with Ahaziah, king of Israel, who did very wickedly. Mm -hmm. And he joined So now, initially, you see, he kind of gave Ahaziah like, yeah, no, I don't, I don't, I don't want to, you know what I'm saying? I don't want to send your people mm -hmm. with my people. Right? But after a while, he joined himself with Ahaziah. Right? You have to understand, Ahaziah was the son of who? Ahab. That was the Ahab's son. Ahab was his man. So you got to look at Ahab like, man, that was kind of like his young boy, probably. You know what I'm saying? It's like, oh, yeah, yeah little knucklehead. You know what I'm saying? I'll watch you grow up. Right? And now Ahaziah, a grown man. Joseph had an old man. So it's like, okay, well, these still my people. You know what I'm saying? I know your wife. You know what I'm saying? I know his. She was like a daughter to me. Yo, your, your mama was like a sister to me. You know what I'm saying? All this stuff is like, they still good people. So he joined himself to him eventually, right? He started off like, eh, I don't know. Then after a while, like, eh, all right, man, he's still my man, right? Keep going, watch this. And he joined himself with him to make ships to go to Tarshish. Mm -hmm. And they made the ships in Izion Giver. Then Eliezer, the son of Dodava of Marish, Marisha, prophesied against Jehoshaphat, saying, Because thou hast joined thyself with Ahaziah, the Lord has broken thy, thy works. And the ships were broken, that they were not able to go to Tarshish. Mm -hmm. That's the end of the chapter. Uh, let's go to um, um, ju -ju 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 -ju. let's go to Second Kings chapter one. <clears throat> You want to keep going? You want to go sit down? You want to go sit down? Okay, keep going. Is Second Kings chapter one verse one. Then Moab rebelled against Israel after the death of Ahab. Mm -hmm. And Ahaziah fell down through a lattice in his upper chamber that was in Samaria and was sick. All right. So Ahaziah, king of Israel, is about to get a little confusing. Because we're going to have kings with the same names. You know what I'm saying? Uh, you're going to have Ahaziah, and then you got Amaziah. And then after that, we're going to have Joram and Jehoram. And they both going to be called Joram in some cases, right? So, you know what I'm saying? It's going to get a little confusing. But why do you think this is happening, the kings with the same names? Why would that start to happen? So you got Ahab, who was friends with who? Jehoshaphat. Jehoshaphat. So both kings were close friends, right? So you can see that they just start naming their kids similar names and, you know what I'm saying, start happening. It probably could just, that's just, you know, they had similar mindsets and they talked about similar things and start, you know what I'm saying? You're going to even see as we get to the future, you see where it say Athaliah right there? Athaliah is actually from Ahab's family. Mm -hmm. That's Ahab's daughter. Right. It's a daughter of, of Amri is how the book call it. You know what I'm saying? But that that's coming through Amri's bloodline through Ahab. Right. So she is actually going to marry uh, Amaziah, I think. So we'll we'll get to that. Mm -hmm. But, you know, what I'm saying you're going to see there's just a lot of mixing going on there. You know what I'm saying? Even down to the names. Yeah. Let's keep going. So think of it like. Like we keep saying, like there's all still the same country just split up, like uh, like the Civil War. You had the North and the South, but it's still all America. And Ahaziah fell down through a lattice in his upper chamber that was in Samaria and was sick. And he sent messengers and said unto them, Go inquire of Beelzebub, the god of Ekron, whether I shall recover of this disease. Right. So now this is the king of the northern tribes, right? The king of the south. Remember, I told y'all they do whatever they want to do up there, 
right? So he fell down. He hurt himself and got sick while he got while he was hurt, right? While he was sick, him being the king, he commanded somebody. He said, "Listen, go go up to where he go Damascus, Ekron. Ekron. He is like go up to Ekron, and Ekron way up north, right? So it's even higher than he is, right? So he said, go all the way up to Ekron and ask the the God, the you know what I'm saying, the people that that work with the God of Beelzebub, right? The God of the flies is what it stands for, right?" Ask that guy if he can help me out with my issue that I got. I hurt my legs. You know what I'm saying? Now I'm sick. Can he help me out with that? So now watch what happens. But the angel of the Lord said to Elijah the Tishbite, Arise and go up to meet the messengers of the king of Samaria and say unto them, Is it not because there is not a God in Israel that you go inquire of Beelzebub, the God of Ekron? Right? So y'all remember Elijah from last week, the last two weeks really, Elijah was the prophet. Remember, he was hiding out, hiding out by the river, drinking the water. Pigeons start, or the birds start bringing them food. Then after that, Elijah got loose. He did some miracles in front of uh, Ahab. He killed a lot of the prophets. Then they start coming after him. He ducked off. Most of God showed him how he was going to do stuff. He ain't going to do it through war. He's going to do it to a calm voice. So then, you know what I'm saying, go back. Ahab kind of talked to him. He bring himself to his own demise, right? He, he showed Elijah, I'm not going to kill Ahab through you. You're going to see some other things happen, right? So it's the same Elijah. Now an angel comes to Elijah like, yo, 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 I need you to um, intercept something that's going on. These boys are about to go up to Ekron, and they're about to ask some other God how he can help, as if he's not the people of Israel whom which God, the most high God, set him up. So God is looking like you should be asking me for help, but you going out to this God from way out in Ekron? That don't make no sense. So he told Elijah to intercept it and let him know what's going to happen. Watch this. Now, therefore, thus says the Lord, thou shalt not come down from that bed on which you are gone up, but shall surely die. Mm -hmm. And Elijah departed. Mm -hmm. And when the messengers turned back unto him, he said unto them, why are you now turned back? And they said unto him, there came a man up to meet us and said unto us, go turn again to the king that sent you and say unto him, thus says the Lord. Is it not because there is not a God in Israel that you send to inquire of Beelzebub, the God of Ekron? Mm -hmm. Therefore, thou shalt not come down from that bed on which you are gone up, but shall surely die. Right. So he told the people, he said, listen, you know what I'm saying? Y'all know y'all got to go back and tell the king so and such and such. So he went back and they, they went back and they told the king. So the king is looking like, why y'all back so soon? You know what I'm saying? I know it take longer to get to Ekron than that. He's like, no, nah, somebody met us. You know what I'm saying? They told us. Dude told her, he is like, uh, what did he have on? You definitely going to die. You ain't getting up from the bed. You know what I'm saying? Because the man, he hurt and he's sick. So he's sitting there like, you know what I'm saying? Like, I'm just trying to figure out when I'm going to, you know, overcome this. They're like, nah, you going to die right where you at. He told me, you know what I'm saying? He told us like, you, you went to Ekron as if it ain't no God in Israel. You know what I'm saying? So why you didn't go to the God in Israel? You know what I'm saying? Apparently yes. the God of Israel kind of mad about it. You ain't getting up. Right? So now watch what, watch what the king said. And he said unto them, what manner of man was he that came up to meet you and Remember, told you these words? This is Ahab's son. So he would be familiar with this man that's speaking. He would be familiar with Elijah. Watch this. They said, he is like, what manner? In other words, what did he look like? You know what I'm saying? What, whoever told you, what, what did he look like? Watch what they say. And they answered him. He was a hairy man oh, and girt with a girdle of boy. leather about his loins. That boy, he boy, he got he had le he had a leather. You know what I'm saying? Think of it like a belt. Leather belt. You know what I'm saying? That boy had a nice big old leather belt, and that boy was hairy. I mean, I ain't seen too many people more hairy than him. Soon as soon as he said it, watch this. And he said, "It is Elijah the Tishbite." Right? He knew exactly what. Was. Oh, that's ain't nobody but Elijah. That's Elijah the darn tish. But where you see him at? Right? Because remember, Elijah out of Dodge, right? Oh, that's a, that ain't nobody but Elijah the tish bite. Watch this. Then the king sent unto him a captain of 50 with his 50. And he went. Why do you think him. he sent the captain of 50 with his 50? A captain of 50 means there is a captain and there's 50 other soldiers behind him. Right? So the king sitting there, he crippled. He's sitting there like, yo, you know what I'm saying? Go uh, go ask uh, Beelzebub, you know what I'm saying, when he think I can get well. Dudes get intercepted. They're like, no, nah, Elijah told us, you know what I mean, that you ain't getting up from this bed, bro. You know what I'm saying? You, you about to die, right? 
How do you think that feels as a king? You the king. You run the whole show. Somebody tell you, you not. You told them to go do something. Somebody come back and say, somebody else told them, you ain't getting up from the bed. How do you think that feel? Man. Like, boy, if you don't get your. Who told you that? That was a lie. He used to get my daddy problems. You know what? Go get his butt. Hey, send a. No, send a. No, send him. The captain of 50s. And send all 50 of his soldiers. So they went down there. They looking for him. Where Elijah at? Let's get these boys. Watch this. And he went up to him and behold, he sat on the top of a hill. Look, Elijah sitting on the top of the hill. I like that picture. Of, you know what I'm saying? Just kind of reading. Sunflower seeds. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> reading a little book. You know what I'm talking about? Eating some sunflower seeds. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? Just, you know what I'm saying? Reading that book. Them boy pop up. You hear the soldier. There he is right there. Elijah, get your butt down because he's on top of the hill. Get your butt down here, but we have to come up there and get you. Let's see what happens. And he spake unto him, thou man of God, the king has said, come down. Right? Hey, man of God, get your butt down here for we come up there and get your butt. King said, <laughs> right? Watch this. And Elijah answered and said to the captain of 50, Watch this. If I be a man of God, then let fire come down from heaven and consume you. And the end die 50. <laughs> Elijah sat there. Still, I like that picture. He just eating his policy. Oh, if I'm a man of God, let fire come down right now. Eat your butt up. Still read. You know what I'm saying? Watch it. And there came down fire from heaven and consumed him and his 50. Right? So you see how this is very different from when he dealt with Ahab. Remember when he dealt with Ahab? Ahab. And all these soldiers, he killed, he killed all the uh, prophets, and the most high God put them on the run. You have to, this, like when you read the whole context, you start to understand what was happening. Ahab and his wife killed all, it, it felt like he killed all of God's prophets. That's what Elijah was thinking, right? So Elijah wants to go to war. He wants to kill Ahab. Elijah's looking like, Let's get him right now. So that's why the first chance he get when the Most High God said it was okay, he is like, yeah, you know what I'm saying? Let me set up these altars. Let me do it. This, that, another. He wanted to have a showdown. So he got his showdown. After that, he killed a bunch of the prophets. He had the people kill a bunch of the prophets. But now he's back on the run. So now that made Elijah sad. He's sitting there like, God. They killed all your prophets. I feel like I'm the only one standing up for you. What are we supposed to do? You know what I'm saying? And most like God was like, he showed him some fire. He showed him some wind. He showed him an earthquake. And he is like, none of that. I'm not in none of that. But in a still small voice. So he was trying to let him know, like, all I'm asking you to do is talk to Ahab. I'm going to handle him. I'm not going to do all the fancy stuff through you. Right? But now, most I got is like, eat these boys up with the fire. It's a little different now, right? And that's how it works, right? If you, if you, if you just take the L, that's what, that's what he was taking. He was taking the L the whole time, right? He had to run and hide and all this stuff, knowing that the, pow the most powerful God is on this side. Sometimes you got to take that L. Now, after he take the L, what'd you see? Most High God got his back with anything. Somebody trying to get you, boy? Remember, they killed all the prophets. Most High God let them kill the rest of the prophets. Not all of them, but you know what I'm saying? He let, they, he let them kill a lot of these prophets, right? Now, after he took the L, it's like, are they trying to get you? How many of them? It's 51. Don't even worry about them. We'll lick them up with a little fire. So they killed them, just swallowed them up with a whole bunch of fire, burnt them boys up. Watch what happened next. Again, also, he sent unto him another captain of 50 with his 50. Right? So then, when the other boys never came back, he's like, what I'm doing? Must be a fluke. Send another 50 up. And they captain. Let's see what else happened. And he answered and said unto him, O man of God, thus has the king said, come down quickly. Right? So now... I like to imagine this second group came with a little bit more, you know what I'm saying? But, all right. Probably a good idea if you come on down there now. King said it. You know what I'm saying? First of all, I like to imagine they're super aggressive. Like, boy, I'll come up there and get you right now. 
Second time, you know what I'm saying? I like the Madden boy, like, you probably should come on down. King said it now. You come down easy, we might not have to do too much to you. Let's see what happened this time. And Elijah answered and said unto them, If I be a man of God, let fire come down from heaven and consume you, consume thee and thy fifty. Right? Said the same thing to him. What happened? And the fire of God came down from heaven and consumed him and his fifty. Burnt them boys right on up. Now what happened? Let's see. And he sent him again, a captain of the third 50 with his 50. Mm -hmm. And the third captain of 50 went up Watch and this. came and fell on his knees before Elijah. If you see two groups of 50 men and they captains and they don't return and you hear the rumors like, man, I'm telling you, I saw fire come down and eat them boys up. The ones that didn't come back. That's crazy. You talking about it all week. That's crazy. You talking about Elijah? They used to chase Elijah. I'm telling you, my daddy was in the army. We used to chase Elijah around it. That boy saw. You trying to fire came down, ate all them boys. I don't believe it. Then the second group go out there. You gotta be kidding me. Them boys ain't been back yet. You saying fire got them too? That's crazy. I hope the king give it up. Now all of a sudden the messenger come in. Yo, yo, yo. Uh, Josiah? Josiah, uh, King said he wants you to take you and your 50. Go up there and look for Elijah. Two other teams didn't come back. You just got done talking about it. Josiah sitting there like, I'm making up these names. This ain't in the script. But I'm, you know, Josiah looking at him. Wait a minute, wait a minute. We got to go now. That's great. I got to go tell my men to go out there. These boys never came back. You saying they got, you saw them get eaten? I saw him, bro. They got ate up by fire, right? So he looking like, man, bro, this is crazy. So now as a, as a captain, you got to go hype your men up. Ain't no fire that can take us out. These people will make up anything. Let's go and let's get this mission. You got to say whatever you got to say to hype your men up. So you got them hyped up and everybody's scared. Everybody heard the same rumor. Everybody looking at it like, man, bro, if I see I mean, if I see a lightning bolt, I'm getting out of Dodge. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm not playing with this stuff, right? So these boys walking up, and they approach the hill where Elijah is. Everybody's shaking, scared. You know what I'm saying? Watch what the captain say this time. And he sent a captain of the third 50 with his 50. And the third captain of 50 went up and came and fell on his knees before Elijah and besought him and said unto him, Look at that. O man of God, I pray thee, let my life and the life of these 50 thy servants be precious in thy sight. Behold, there come fire down from heaven and burnt up the two captains of the former fifties with their fifties. Therefore, let my life now be precious in thy sight. And the angel of the Lord said unto Elijah, go down with him. Be not afraid of him. And he arose and went down with him unto the king. You see how that worked? That's all the most high God want is for you to take an L. Right? It's their job to go whoop Elijah out, bring him back to the king all beat up and bloody and be like, king, here he go. What you want to do with him? You want us to kill him? You know what I'm saying? You want to talk to him first? Why? Well, that was their job. You want to throw him in jail. Two of them, two of the groups went up, got their butt burnt up. The third one was like, yo, I just, listen, I understand what happened to the two groups. Just, I just hope that my life and the life of my men it's precious in you. In other words, I hope you give us some mercy. He bowed down to him. Right? He already accepted the defeat. I ain't trying to do nothing to you. I'm out here. My king told me to come out, but I'm accepting defeat. I just hope that we pray. In other words, when you, when you bow down to somebody, I just hope my life is precious. You're saying, I accept defeat. Just spare me. He already accepted that he lost. Right? Walked out there and accepted that he lost with all his men. Then the angel told Elijah, all right, cool, go with him. You got to understand how powerful this little interaction is. What that means is him, the one who went and accepted loss, is the one who won. Because he gets to bring Elijah back to the captain. Things that two other groups of 50 men couldn't do. To the king. What did I say? Captain. To the king. The captain got to bring him to the king. He got to bring him to uh, Ahaziah. 
right? He won by taking the L first. Because it's just pride. That's all he had to do is set aside the pride. He know who Elijah is. He's just trying to follow orders. He's stuck between a rock and a hard place. He's trying to figure it out. He know the other team didn't make it. So you know what? Let me try this a little differently. And what do you know? It worked. Angel said, you know what, Elijah? Go ahead and go with them. So they get to bring Elijah back like, like they beat up Elijah. Elijah ain't got no scratch on him. Boy, better not touch him. You know what I'm saying? Let's see. We'll see what happens. And he said unto him, thus says the Lord, for as much as thou hast sent messengers to inquire of Beelzebub, the God of Ekron, mm -hmm. is it not because there is no God in Israel to inquire of his word? Uh -huh. Therefore, you shall not come down off that bed which you are gone up, but shall surely die. Right. You notice a real prophet. He got to speak directly to the king. You see how he didn't change his words a bit. Right. This was the message that was given to your men. The men delivered the message to the king. Now, the king finally got his hands on uh, uh, Elijah and Elijah got the same message to his face. Watch this. So he died according to the word of the Lord, which Elijah had spoken. Mm -hmm. And Jehoram reigned in his stead in the second year of Jehoram, the son of Jehoshaphat, king of Judah, because he had no son. Mm -hmm. Now, the rest of the acts of Ahaziah, which he did, are they not written in the book of the Chronicles of the kings of Israel? Mm -hmm. That's in the chapter? Yeah. All right, so we'll we'll end it right there. And then after that, what we'll see is, so Ahaziah just died, and Joram, his son, took over. And then we're we going we gonna to learn a little bit more about Jehoshaphat. Well, actually, I think it's actually going to tell us about uh, Eli uh, Elisha and Elijah. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? But we're going to go into Elisha and Elijah, and then once we get back that, it's going to jump back to Jehoshaphat. And then we're going to learn kind of, you know what I'm saying, the rest of Jehoshaphat's life. And then we're going to go to Jehoshaphat's son, who was also named, Jehoram, you know what I'm saying? So you got Joram and Jehoram, but really it's the same name, you know what I'm saying? And uh, and then we'll kind of go from there and see how far we get. Any questions? Any questions? Well, I said, do you have any questions? All right, let's pray out. Oh, look who's not asleep. Look who's not asleep. Sit on the office, you know, look who just.